Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In today's episode, we are going to be making a figure that has two panels, and in those panels, there are two sets of box plots. I am taking my inspiration from this paper that was published in the journal MBio. It's an open access journal, which means that you can get access to all of the figures for free. Um, this was a paper published by Stefan, uh, maybe it's Stephanie uh, Martinez, sorry if I don't know the pronunciation, um, looking at unveiling the importance of heterotrophy for coral symbiosis under heat stress. And so the, the figure that I'm interested in, or I'll highlight for you, is figure one. And as you kind of look through the figures in this paper, they have a number of these box plots or two, uh, two paneled box plots kind of like these, right? No, there's a four, right? So I'm gonna start back at figure one and, and look at how we might go about recreating this figure in R using ggplot2 and other tools from the tidyverse. Now, back in early September, I think it was September 6th, I sent out a newsletter where I talked about this figure and in words described how I would go about building out this figure. So if you didn't read that or if you don't subscribe to my newsletter, by all means go down below in the description and there'll be a link to that newsletter so you can read and kind of get my thoughts before I dig into actually implementing the strategy that I described there. So a couple of things stand out to me about this figure that again, I highlighted in that newsletter is that first of all, it is a two component figure. Um, there's a set of box plots on the top, a set of box plots on the bottom. The two sets of box plots have different variables on the y-axis and two different variables on the x-axis. Um, so I don't think this would lend itself well to faceting using something like facet wrap or facet grid. Instead, I think what we'll have to do is build each individual panel and then combine them together with something like uh, patchwork or cow plot. Before we get to that though, there's some more stuff that stands out to me in this figure. First of all, what I notice is that the box plots themselves um, are, have a gray fill and gray lines, except for the median line. The median line is a solid black line, which is kind of hard to do in ggplot2. So we'll have to think about how to do that. One of the other things that stands out to me um, is that the y-axis text has superscripts like this minus two and subscripts here. It also has a Greek letter. So there's a little bit of styling that goes into making these y-axes look nice. Related to the y-axis is up here on panel A, there is a times 10 to the fifth indication that all of these uh, number of symbionts per square centimeter should be multiplied to 100,000 times 10 to the fifth. So that's interesting. So something else that stands out to me, especially in panel B, is that the four treatments are separated uh, with equal spacing, right? Which tells me that they treated these four treatments as four separate variables. Um, sometimes in ggplot, we, when we use like geom box plot, we can group by say 25, the temperature, and then within that x-axis variable, we can then separate light and dark, or we could do light and separate 25 and 32, and then dark 25 and 32. Here, because everything is equally spaced apart, I have the sense that they, um, that they treated each as a separate variable. And why that's important is because then they got the labels to go in non-numeric order. They went 25 light, 32 light, and then back to 25 dark, 32 dark. So normally things are alphabetical. So they did some magic uh, using factors to get that to work. Of course, one of the other things that they did here is that they put in a annotation to indicate that the comparison between 25 and 32 in A was significant and 25 and 32 in B, uh, for the light at least, uh, were significant, as well as 25 and 32 dark were significant. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. Also, I noticed that they have gray uh, y-axis ticks. I suspect that might have been a mistake, but we can think about doing that too. So we've got a lot to do, and let's see how we can get through that. Here I have the example code that I put in uh, that newsletter. I'll go ahead and add library uh, tidyverse. So we've got our tidyverse tools all loaded. I spent some time thinking about the structure of what coral physiology uh, would have. So what we know from the paper is that they had 72 uh, coral fragments and 36 of those they subjected to one temperature and 36 to another temperature. Then for panel A, they got these density values, which are again, times 10 to the fifth. And then for the light, this is taken from the photosynthesis column and for the dark, 
that came from the respiration column, okay? And so again, these are all made up data that I kind of picked to loosely follow what I saw in the original figure. So let's start on panel A. And so we'll go ahead and bring choral physiology here down and we'll do ggplot to start making our box plot. So we'll do ggplot, so we'll then do AES and we'll do x equals uh, temperature, y equals density, and then we'll do plus geome box plot. And I'm getting a warning message that I've got a continuous x aesthetic and you'll see then that I get a single box plot, uh, which is not exactly what I want. And so what that tells me is that temperature probably needs to be recast as a character variable. And so I find that if I take a continuous variable and make it a character, then that of course will make it uh, categorical or discrete. So I'll do as dot character on temperature. And so now we get the two separate box plots. So again, uh, we're, we're well on our way to getting this going. Um, the fill is that gray color. So I'll go ahead and add fill equals gray, and I'll go ahead and do plus theme classic. So here I think we're pretty close to where we want to be. I'm um, just generally thinking about the appearance of the figure. Let's go ahead and play with the labels on the axis as well as the limits, as well as those tick marks. Let's go ahead and first start with labs. And then for X, we'll do temperature. And then Y, we'll do symbionts. And then CM minus two. Uh, and that needs to be a superscript. And so I think we can do that with two caret signs. And running that, we'll of course see that in the Y axis label. Let's go ahead and do theme axis dot title dot y and we'll do element markdown. And so element markdown comes to us from the ggtext package. So we'll do library ggtext. And that allows us to embed markdown and HTML into our figures. Oh, and I see I forgot to put a plus sign. So if that didn't work, uh, sometimes I find that there's various flavors of markdown and ggtext doesn't know all of them. So what I will probably do to be safe will be to put in the HTML tag of soup uh, and then close the anchor with another soup. And so now what we find is that that centimeter uh, is negative two with the negative two being the exponent. So one thing I'm noticing about the Y axis is that it doesn't extend below zero. Let's go ahead and add in um, scale y continuous and the limits of uh, from zero to na so na allows uh, basically geo and box plot to set the upper limit and here then we'll do expand equals c zero comma zero don't forget our plus sign so that gets us zero at the bottom like we had here uh, we are getting a warning message that it removed one row containing non-finite outside the scale range which is a pain, that's probably because of what we have for 32. So um, I think that this whisker extends down below the zero. And again, because these data are all made up, um, why don't we go ahead and change the standard deviation for the density on um, the 32. So here we had three, let's go do 2.5. And I forgot to set a seed. So we'll do set seed 1976.06. 20 and that's good for ensuring reproducibility that was even worse <laughs> let's do one uh, again i don't totally care about what it looks like but that's pretty good and we don't worry about losing any of our data so i don't know that we really want to have gray tick marks but why not uh, we'll do axis dot ticks dot y and we'll do element line color equals gray and so now we see that we've got our gray tick marks there, whatever. We'll, we'll go with what the authors had originally. And then what they also had at the top, at least for panel A, was that times uh, 10 to the fifth. And so I think what we could do is that there is a tag argument in labs that allows us to basically put a tag, or, or actually we could do even like subtitle, and we could then do uh, times 10, uh, again, soup uh, five soup and so that puts that there but we have to style it with markdown right 
And so here we'll again do plot dot subtitle element markdown. And so now we get that times 10 to the fifth, and that's pretty close to where it was. Um, there's a variety of things we could do to move it. I'm pretty happy with it being there. One thing I noticed is that their text is a bit larger than what I have. So why don't I go ahead and add access.text.y. Um, and actually all their stuff is big, right? Although their X I think is a little bit bigger than their Y. Access text Y equals element text size equals 12. Start there and see how that looks. That's cool. And then we'll do the same thing for the X axis. Uh, and that's big. Uh, we could maybe make it 14 because it did appear to be a bit bigger. There is no tick mark on the X axis. So we'll go ahead and remove that. So axis ticks X uh, element blank will be what we'll do. Uh, element blank is good for removing parts uh, completely. That looks pretty good. Actually, this wasn't temperature. This is treatments. Ah, I wonder why they didn't put temperature. Anyway, treatments, good. Um, and that title is at least as big as that font. So let's go ahead in here and we'll do axis.title and we should be able to do element text size equals 14. And that should change both the Y and the axis, X axis. So I think they did use two different size fonts. Ah, axis title Y, we'll make that 12. And then for, so dot X and dot Y. Um, we'll make that 14. Ah, I'm mixing my, my I've got too many uh, instances of axis title Y. Um, and so I have the markdown way up here. So let's go ahead and put that size in the element markdown. And it's good anyway to have, I think X and Y components together running that. We now get a good font size. We still have that superscript and we've got our treatments on the X axis. Now what I want to do is turn our attention back to those box plots where it was all gray um, with a solid black line for the median. And we can do that by, again, coming back to our geom box plot and do color equals gray. And so now we see that it doesn't look like there's a median line at all, um, but we do want to have a median line in there. So what we can do is a function called stat summary. And stat summary allows us to add a summarization to the data. Let's go ahead and look at the help for stat summary. And stat summary is something I've covered in a video a long time ago, but let's review it. So the stat summary allows us to give a geom. So in this case, it's point range, a position, uh, the function or the function data, the function that we want to use to set the function max and the function min. Okay. And so if we look at fun data, Let's look down at what it's expecting there. Function that is giving, given the complete data and should return a data frame with variables y min, y, and y max. Um, whereas fun min, fun, fun max are three separate functions. And so what we could do, because I don't want to show like the min or the max, is I could have one function for all three of those. Okay, so maybe that's what I'll try. So I'll do stat summary and we'll do uh, fun equals median and then fun min equals median and fun max equals median. So that gives it a point uh, because that's the default geometry for uh, stat summary. And so what we'll then do for stat summary would be geom equals and we'll do crossbar. And so crossbar is basically this part of um, the box and whisker plot. So we need that comma. And so now what we get is we get that crossbar, um, but it's wider than our box. And so we should be able to put something in here like width equals 0 0.8, and that brings it in a bit. So let's try 0 0.78. Let's try 0 0.75. That's probably what it is. So that looks pretty good. Let me go ahead and clean up my code here so it's not scrolling all the way across the screen. Good. So theirs is a bit thinner than mine. Um, I think what I could do in here then would be to do like line width equals, let's try one, and that makes it really thick. Um, at least we know we got the right argument, 0 0.5. Uh, let's do 1.5. I think that looks pretty good. Mm, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. One thing I noticed is that they have a cap at the top of their line 
whereas I don't have that. Um, that's called a staple. And so there's a staple width argument in geom box plot. So let's go into a staple width and we'll do 0 0.5 to get us started. It's a little bit more narrow than that. So let's come back up here and let's do 0 0.3. So I think that looks like a pretty good aspect ratio. One thing I noticed is that this line seems to be getting clipped at the very top. I could go ahead and turn off that clipping using chord Cartesian and do clip equals off. Good, so that gives me a little bit better appearance of the top edge of that staple. So if I go toggle back and forth, you can kind of see the difference. It's really small, but I notice these things and they annoy me. So anyway, um, so I think this looks pretty good. One thing also that they have that I don't have is the um, indicator of what's significant or not. And so there is a package to do that. Everyone always messages it to me. I think it's like ggpubr or something like that. Um, I would just assume make my own. And so that's what I'm gonna do, <laughs> right? So let's go ahead and we can use the annotate function to draw in those um, that line. And so I think what I'll do is I'll actually increase my Y axis. So it probably wasn't necessary to do that clip off anyway. But anyway, let's go up to say 55 with our Y axis. And so that gets us a bit more space. And so then we want a bar going across and we can do that with annotate. And so annotate, the geom we'll use is segment. And then on the X and X end and Y and Y end, okay? And then that should get us a line, right? So our X, let's, I'm not totally sure what these are, if this is one and two. So let's, let's try one and two for our start and end. And then our Y, um, we will put at say 53 and then end at 53. And then we get a line, right? There's, I notice kind of ends before the cap. So I was guessing with one and two, so I'm pretty happy that that worked. So maybe what I could do would be like 1.2 to uh, 1.8, maybe not so much, but let's do 1.1 and 1.9. Yeah, I think that looks good enough. Um, and then on top of that, we want to put a, a star. So we'll do geom text. So we'll do X of 1.5 and Y of, uh, let's do 54. And then we'll do label equals star. And so we get a star on top of that. Theirs is a bit bigger. Let's have a bigger star with size equals two. Oh, that's small. Uh, so let's do four, it's a bit bigger. Let's do 10, that's maybe a little too big. Let's cut the difference and do eight. And so I think that looks pretty good. You could also do the same thing with annotate to draw um, the bottoms of those, that line to kind of come down to indicate the bracket. So I think this looks like a pretty good version of panel A. Let's go ahead then and save this as panel A. And now we wanna do panel B. And so you'll recall that we had coral physiology. And for panel B, we have the two temperatures and then we have light and dark. And so what I'm gonna do is start out by modifying this table to make it long to have 25 dark, 25 light, okay? And so we can do that by, let's simplify things with select and the columns we want are, so I'm gonna keep everything but the density. And then we're going to go ahead and pivot longer these two columns of photosynthesis and respiration. So we'll do pivot longer. And so that's the data. So the columns that we're gonna choose will be photosynthesis and respiration. I don't think we need quotes. Yeah, we didn't need quotes, cool. Um, so now what we get is temperature and name. In these types of situations, I like to make a pretty name, basically combining these two columns, right? And so I'll do a mutate where we'll do pretty name. So I'll use an if else function. And so if else name equals equals a uh, photo synthesis. Uh, if so, if it's name equals photosynthesis, then the output is going to be, um, let's go ahead and use the glue function from the glue package. Uh, I find that's a little bit easier to work with than paste. So if the name is photosynthesis, then we're gonna go ahead and do glue. 
and we're going to have uh, temperature in curly braces, space, and then light. And if not, then we'll do the same thing, but dark. And I just look back and they've got lowercase light and dark. And so I'll make those lowercase as well. Running that, we then see that we've got our pretty name. Cool, right. So now we're ready to plot this puppy, right? So we'll do ggplot AES X uh, is gonna be the pretty name, right? And then the Y will be the value. And there's no fills. So we'll go ahead then and do geom box plot. And so now we see we have the 25 dark and light, 32 dark and light, um, but they went light, light, dark, dark. And so we need to reorder this using a factor. And so we'll go ahead and modify this mutate again. Um, and here I'll do pretty name equals factor on pretty name. And then I need to give it levels. Right, so we'll do levels equals, maybe I'll put this on a separate line. And here now I wanna put the order that I want things to appear in. And so it's gonna be 25 light, uh, 32 light, and then 25 dark, and 32 dark. And that is kind of going across the screen a little bit, so let's go ahead and pull that back. Very good, so then we get 25 light, 32 light, 25 dark, 32 dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring everything from labs down here and add that. So then I will modify, I'll go ahead for now and comment out the scale Y continuous. I'm not totally sure what I want it to be. And I know I don't need this subtitle. I know I'm gonna change Y, but let's just look at how this appears. Again, we're comparing here and here. Um, and that looks pretty good. Um, their scale goes from negative three to eight by ones. All right, so then we'll go ahead and come into our scale Y continuous, and I'll make this say minus six uh, to let's say seven. Actually, that's probably more like four. That looks pretty good. We could probably even go to minus three. Um, I need to add in those breaks though to go every, every value. And so again, that was in scale Y continuous. We can do breaks equals seek. Uh, from minus four to seven by ones. And so then we get all of those values. Let's see if we can get away with minus three without it removing any data. That looks good, no warning or error messages. And that looks pretty close to what they had. Again, they have uh, the gray. And so let's make our geom box plot, fill equals gray, color equals gray. Uh, these need to be in quotes, of course. Then we need staple width. And what did I use up above here? I did 0 0.3. So it looks pretty nice. Now we wanna add on the uh, the geom, uh, the stat summary, right? So I'll go ahead and copy this down. And we'll put that after the box plot because we want that median line to appear on top of the boxes. Very good. And so now we wanna add our annotation. And so, Let's go back up here and we're gonna grab this annotate segment and text and we'll put that at the bottom here. And we'll start with, let's assume again it goes one, two, three, four. Um, and so we'll do like that. And so for Y, I'll put that at like 6.9, uh, 6.9. And then here um, I'll do, uh, let's do seven, and then label is star. So let's see what this looks like. So we get that. So I think I'm gonna have my Y axis maybe go up to like seven and a half. Let's do that. Good, I think that looks pretty good. There's ended right at the number, but eh, whatever. Um, and so now we wanna do the same thing over here, where again, we can copy and paste this down. And we're gonna do from uh, 3.1 to 3.9, and we're gonna be at like, let's say one and a half, and one and a half, and then this will be y equals one and a half, and then this will be 3.5. I noticed that this is a little bit closer to the line than that, and I think I went up a tenth, so let's go up 1.6. So it lifts it up a little bit, and that looks pretty good, 
and I think we've done a pretty good job of replicating it. Um, oh, I still have the symbionts centimeter squared. I think someone told me that. All right, so now we have this big mess of a label uh, on the y-axis. So let's come down and we'll then on labs, we'll uh, remove this symbionts. So we'll have u, mole, o, and then it's gonna be sub for a subscript to subscript and then centimeter and then sup for a superscript minus two sup and then we need h and again it's going to be superscript uh, minus one superscript so we'd want the y to be markdown but we already have it in markdown right and so that gets us what we want but that mu that u is is pretty lame right so there's a variety of ways we can get that mu we could put in the unicode but we could also insert html which would be like at mu semicolon and so now we get that mu so again i think this looks a lot like what we have here the last thing we have to do is to combine the two plots together so we're going to go ahead and use patchworks so we'll do library patchwork up oh, and i must not have that installed so we'll go over to packages and we'll search for patchwork it's not there so we'll install it here patchwork all right, so now we can library it. And I recalled that we forgot to save this final one to panel B, okay? And so let's go ahead and make sure we have both panels loaded. And so you'll notice that when I ran panel A, panel B, nothing outputted, right? And if I look back one, it's still kind of my development of panel B. If I wanna see panel A, I could do panel underscore A, and that pops up. If I do B, that pops up. The beauty of patchwork is that I can then do panel A plus panel B. And that then puts them on the same plot with each other. Now, I want them on top of each other, not side to side with each other. To get them side by side, what I can do is division. And so now I get one on top of the other, like so. And so that looks pretty slick, if you ask me. Um, we'll go ahead and copy this in, and then we'll go ahead and save it so we'll do gg save and we'll do uh, coral physiology dot png. We'll then do width equals five, height equals nine. Uh, and I, for some reason, piped it in, which wasn't what I wanted to do. So um, let's run this and then this. And so now we should have a file called coral physiology png. So this is what my version looks like. Um, I think to match theirs, mine could be wider still. Um, we're pretty close, right? So width, if I make that nine, we see that overall the figures are pretty similar to each other. So comparing the two, I see that my fonts are a bit smaller than their fonts. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that a whole lot. Um, I guess I could go through and, and bump everything up. Um, but what I do need to add are the labels for the two panels, A and B. So what I should be able to do then is plot annotation and we'll then do tag levels and we'll do A. And so that then gives us our A and B and we can save that. Uh, that looks pretty good. We could change the size of our tag uh, to do size equals, let's do 15 font face equals bold. And it turns out we have to modify that actually in a theme. So to add in the theming, we're gonna use that ampersand, right? And then we'll do theme plot dot tag equals element text. And so this theme is going to be modifying the theme of the patchwork of the assembled plot, not the individual plots. And we'll do size equals 12, um, face equals bold. And so now um, we've got bold, it's a little bit bigger. We could go bigger still. Now let's do like 18 and that looks pretty good. Um, I might quickly go through here and find the font so that I can have it looking as close to this as possible. So I was able to increase the fonts on my y-axis to be 20 and the x-axis I believe is 25. Um, I also kind of brought in mine a little bit so it's not so wide. Um, you can see that they're about the same width now, um, close enough. Um, and doing that, kind of getting the size of the figure right is really important before you start changing the size of fonts and placements of different things. 
on the whole, I am pretty happy with how this looks. Again, I don't have their original data. Um, I do notice though that like their box plot here is a bit wider than mine. I can't let that go. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. Um, and so we would come back up to geom box plot. And if we did like width equals 0 0.5, we see that that looks pretty good, but now our median line is too long. So let's come back up and I think we'll make that 0.5 in our stat summary. And that looks good. All right. So I will leave it there because I could pick at this for a while and it's not even my own data. So hopefully you found this interesting. Again, how to go from the narrative that I wrote in that newsletter to generating the plot that we have on the right. Um, maybe it's hard for you to tell the difference between mine and theirs. There's a few things for you to clean up here. Um, see if you can use that annotate function to get the, the drop down lines on those significant bars um, and and see if you can maybe perhaps do a, perhaps a little bit better job of matching the colors that I have versus what they have. So I thought this was a lot of fun. What started out as a fairly simple figure uh, got to be a little bit more complicated and allowed us to see all sorts of different parts of using ggplot to make an attractive visual. So hope you found this interesting and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.